let's uh, move on with the proceedings for today. Uh, good morning, Sri Lanka. Good evening, Japan. Uh, warm welcome to to each and every one of you uh, who have joined us on Merck Live and uh, World Royalist Association of Japan. Uh, uh, we call it ORAJ, which was inaugurated in March this year, uh, is the alumni chapter of Royal College in Japan. And uh, we have uh, uh, set our goals to promote the advancement of Royal College, our alum, uh, uh, and uplift the education of young royalists uh, while promoting and strengthening the cultural, educational, scientific, sports, and entertainment relationships between Japan and Sri Lanka. And uh, your pathway to Japan is the inaugural event of ORAJ and accepting our sincere invitation today, the Embassy of Japan in Sri Lanka, the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Japan, Akita International University, Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University, Tokyo International University and the University of Tokyo are here with us this evening. A uh, very warm welcome to uh, uh, Mr. Kotaro Katsuki, uh, Minister, Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of Japan in Sri Lanka, and uh, Professor Monty Kasim, the President of Akita International University and the Advisor of ORAJ, and uh, Ms. Ai Yamamoto, the Admissions uh, Office of Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University, uh, Professor H.D. Karuna Ratna, uh, Senior Professor of the University of Tokyo uh, Sri Lanka Office, and uh, Professor Yuichi Kondo, uh, Professor of Ritsumeikan Asia Pacific University. Mr. Abe Amar Dasa, the Chairman of the Loyalty Pledge Management Committee of the Royal College Union. And uh, to uh, commence this evening's proceedings, uh, I would like to invite Professor Monty Kasim, the President of uh, Akita International University and the advice of uh, or Royalist Association of Japan to deliver the opening address. Uh, thank you, Birendra. Actually, Birendra has been the car behind the throne of the Old Royalist Association in Japan. It's been a dream of his for a long time, and I'm really happy that uh, under Ambassador Sanji Gunasekara's uh, blessings, we were able to launch the association this year. Um, First of all, uh, uh, dignitaries from the uh, Embassy of Japan, uh, particularly Minister Kotaro Katsuki, Deputy Chief of Mission, um, the dignitaries from the Royal College Union, as well as the ORAJ members, and most importantly, all of you uh, who have uh, uh, thought it uh, worthwhile uh, to consider Japan as a destination for higher education uh, in the future. Uh, so royalists, uh, young and old, welcome. I think the only reason I'm here is because I'm perhaps the oldest royalist living in Japan, um, and that is really old. So uh, uh, quite a few generations away from you guys, but uh, young in spirit, and I hope that we can work together uh, and we can see you physically in Japan sometime soon. Uh, well, as a destination for higher education, uh, you will have uh, presentations other than this, but I must say that there are around 770 universities in Japan, uh, 660 or of them are four-year universities. Uh, the others are uh, what we might call uh, two-year colleges, which lead to university study. Um, they are established either by the national government, uh, sometimes by public municipal corporations, cities, prefectures, and so on. And uh, others are uh, privately established. But all of them, in my view, even the ones established by private uh, parties, have a very, very sound ethos where it, the public good is served. Uh, later on, I will touch upon this as well. Um, one of the characteristics, characteristics of many Japanese universities, I wouldn't say all, but many Japanese universities, is that they believe in nurturing the human being as the very foundation. And for this, uh, many of these universities have what is called a liberal arts foundation. Uh, 
um, I asked uh, uh, one of the former heads of the university I graduated from in postgraduate studies, the University of Tokyo. I asked the former head of that university, Dr. Akita, Akito Arima, who sadly passed away uh, recently. Um, what uh, is your proudest uh, moment as uh, the head of uh, the University of Tokyo? He was also later Minister of Education. I, I thought Akita Sensei would talk about being, uh, you know, his about his contributions to physics because he was an excellent physicist. But he said it was staving off the closure and helping the liberal arts foundations of Tokyo University to remain. I was really stunned. And for the first time I realized the profoundness of this statement when I came to Akita International University. Uh, so I think these liberal arts foundations for many young students from Sri Lanka are seen uh, as, um, as a kind of humanities study and therefore not very important or interesting because they would like to get on with science or engineering or business or whatever it is as quickly as possible. But I think behind anything we do, being a good human being is fundamental. And that is what these liberal arts foundations of many Japanese universities, including the University of Tokyo, teach us. Now, I have known many high school students who go to the University of Tokyo's Colombo office and come back and tell me, but they are only admitting people to a liberal arts course. And I tell them that is the way all Japanese students at the University of Tokyo start their life. Uh, it takes a long time to convince our fairly utilitarian young minds that there is a higher sense of purpose in life. And that is what a liberal arts education gives you. In addition to this, some of the other characteristics of Japanese higher education is that there is a commitment to collective learning and peer learning, where you are taught to learn and integrate what you have learned in your various individual courses. Uh, this is done through the modality of the seminar. And the seminar is a fantastic place where you learn together, you become friends, you trust each other. And the proof of this was when I was working as senior advisor to the prime minister in the last government, it was very easy for me to do things because whenever I had to get something tricky done, uh, all I had to do was lift a telephone and call my counterpart, who was the senior advisor in Prime Minister Abe's cabinet, uh, who was um, in the same uh, seminar as myself when I was a graduate student. These friendships are lifelong. And you might have seen in the news recently that 1.4 odd million doses of the vaccine, uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, were uh, sent to uh, Sri Lanka from Japan free of charge. Uh, although we requested to purchase it, sent free of charge. And this was all the work of this one man who the friendship and the trust became the foundation of taking the request seriously. So Japan is a place where relational capital among people is valued very, very highly. It is not a dry utilitarian market oriented mindset. Now, in addition to this, the uh, uh, this is possibly best reflected in the attitude of heads of universities. I mean, as uh, having been uh, heads of a few Japanese universities in the past, I meet uh, heads of universities from all over the world. And many of the Anglo-American universities and the Australian universities, many of those heads, if not most of them, uh, see higher education as a market. It's a new industrial sector. It's a sector where the student is the market and students must be followed uh, and captured so that your own higher education sector can flourish. You will find no head of a Japanese university who thinks this way. They all see young scholars as guardians of the future. That is a very different mindset. And if I was you, I would think about this. Would you like to be just a commodity in the higher education marketplace? Or would you like to be seen as a bastion of the future? There is no doubt that Japanese higher education 
is the latter. It does not, however, true to Japanese modesty and their cultural heritage uh, of its very, very rich uh, peoples, they do not brag about themselves. They do not beat their breasts and say, we have all of this, please come to us. But it is, I think, up to many of us, like myself, who have benefited from this system to articulate for Japan what Japanese people themselves are too modest to talk about. So I would suggest that as a destination for higher education, it is wonderful. The facilities in the science laboratories are incredible. Uh, they are continually updated and you can do all kinds of wonderful things uh, relatively freely. Uh, and this, I think, for those who are interested in science and technology streams is wonderful. There is a long-standing business ethos of Sampo Yoshi in Japan, where your customers, companies, stakeholders, and society at large must all benefit, not only pure personal profit of the individual or the institution. So there is a kind of a broadness of vision in developing human minds that I would argue is something that makes Japanese higher education worth uh, coming into. Uh, finally, I think uh, for all of you, uh, there will be separate university presentations too. Uh, I urge you to give it serious consideration because now more than ever before, we must come together as one. And Japan and Sri Lanka are both long-standing friends Sri Lanka is in a very strategic position geopolitically and economically in the center of the Indian Ocean between Singapore and Dubai. There is no other major maritime hub. And I hope that with Japan's help, we can make this an air-sea hub that will actually make our country dynamic and enable Japan and other countries to apply this trade route prosper as well. So there is a lot at stake for the world at large, as well as for all of you. So please consider seriously um, Japan as your destination for study abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you, Birendra. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you uh, very much for your uh, valuable uh, words and sharing your thoughts uh, with us. And uh, personally, uh, Professor Kasim has in, uh, inf uh, inspired and influenced me to uh, come to Japan. So thank you uh, for that as well. And uh, to continue with uh, today's agenda, uh, next we have uh, a video message uh, by His Excellency Sanjeev Gunasekara, the ambassador of Sri Lanka to Japan. And uh, he's also the honorary president of Oraj. Unfortunately, he was uh, his uh, not able to uh, be with us live, but he has compiled this message, especially for all the young royalists who have joined us on Merck Live today. Welcome to the inaugural Pathway to Japan seminar organized by the Old Royalist Association of Japan. I'm happy to be a part of this seminar especially considering we are focusing on young Sri Lankans, the Sri Lankan youth, and showing them the opportunities that are available to come to Japan. So in this regard, Japan being a first world country, a developed country with values, uh, religion, and um, culture very similar to Sri Lanka, it is a natural transition if uh, students like to go abroad to learn, especially in the fields of science and technology, to come to Japan. And Japan, just like other countries, do offer scholarships, even to undergraduate students. They offer, there is a government program called the Sakura program that offers some undergraduate uh, student scholarships. It offers more scholarships to masters and PhD students, but also the universities themselves offer partial scholarships to well-qualified 
students. So these partial scholarships normally put you over the top and you can work uh, up to 28 hours being a full-time student. So these are opportunities that the Old Royalist Association of Japan likes to bring to you today. And as I understand, there are four universities who are participating to educate you further. And me being the ambassador for, uh, for Sri Lanka in Japan, our mission always uh, stands by the students and we are ready to uh, share any information with you and any updates with you regarding visas, regarding, uh, regarding more information with education. Please feel free to check us out on Sri Lanka Embassy Tokyo dot com or Sri Lanka Embassy Tokyo. Follow us on Facebook page and when we have updates, you will be able to see them. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Your Excellency. So moving on with the proceedings, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kotaro Katsuki, uh, the Minister and the Deputy Head of Mission of Embassy of Japan in Sri Lanka. Uh, Professor Monte Kasim, President of the International University, His Excellency Mr. Sanjeev Kandasekara, Ambassador, Embassy of Sri Lanka in Japan, uh, Senior Professor uh, H.D. Kalnaratne, Director of the University of Tokyo, Sri Lanka Office, Professor Yuichi Kondo, Professor and former Dean of Mission, which make an Asia Pacific University. Uh, Mr. Abaya Amaradasa, Chairman, Low T Pledge Management Committee of the Royal College Union, teachers, parents, students of the Royal College, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning and good afternoon. Aiboan, uh, Wanaka, Konnichiwa. Uh, I'm Kotaro Katsuki, uh, the Deputy Ambassador here uh, in Colombo for Japan, and I'm very glad today uh, to be part of this uh, gathering online, uh, because after my arrival in Colombo, I have run into many royalists. Uh, last evening, in fact, I had dinner with His Excellency Ambassador Ganasekara, who just uh, had his video message uh, online, and then the day before, uh, I had dinner uh, with uh, the secretary to the Speaker of Parliament, who also turned out to be a royalist. So with both gentlemen, I, we were discussing a little bit about this gathering. And um, uh, one of them told me, what would, you know, I asked him, what would you think would be the best message to send to royalists who are attending school at this moment? And then uh, the answer was, for a royalist, uh, the important thing is go global. And uh, well, that's what he said, and I think I share that. And uh, there are many reasons behind that. I think those who are studying at the uh, Royal College uh, are uh, laying a very good foundation, I think, uh, for the earlier period of acquiring knowledge and experience. And uh, as you know, uh, we are uh, in this uh, ever uh, uh, interdependent world, uh, there are many uh, expertise and experiences all around the globe that, uh, you know, uh, based on your foundation, you can go out and look towards and uh, seek towards, uh, that will help you uh, further uh, whatever direction you would wish to uh, go forward in. Uh, then I think uh, Japan uh, would be a very good destination for, you know, uh, for all the uh, youths uh, that are studying at the Royal College right now. Uh, Japan is an island uh, nation which is living next to a giant country. Doesn't that sound a little bit similar to a country? Yes, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is an island country living next to a giant country. So uh, I think uh, inevitably uh, our uh, strategies, our way of thinking becomes very, I think, uh, in line. Also, I think another thing I find very much in common is uh, the, the uh, friendliness and kindness of the people that we meet here in Sri Lanka. If you go to Japan, I think you will find out that uh, many Japanese people, they are all very helpful and caring and will be willing to uh, communicate with you and to help you uh, if you, you know, ever have any difficulties. And I think um, uh, uh, Professor Monte Kassim just mentioned about uh, uh, certain aspects of Japanese higher education, like nurturing human beings. 
And I think, yes, that approach uh, definitely lies within our society very deeply. But I, having arrived here, also I think uh, that basis also lies uh, in Sri Lanka. And I think definitely for those who are studying at the Royal College at this moment. Another aspect I think of Japan would be, we are the third largest economy in the world uh, with advanced technologies in many areas. So I think uh, for anyone uh, seeking uh, to improve uh, or move forward in their career, I think there's a lot that Japan can offer and there's a lot that you could study and you know, obtain so that you can utilize that towards the future. And, um, and especially uh, talking about the youth of Japan, uh, you know, they are very active these days. Uh, they are not just in big cities, but they also are, you know, uh, some of them uh, move to the rural areas and then to, you know, start their own business startups. And, uh, and I think uh, there's a keyword here, that's sustainability. I think uh, in view of the sustainability movement uh, that is happening all around the globe, uh, there are you know, abundant chances, not only in Tokyo or Osaka, Kyoto, but in other areas. So I think um, some of the universities that uh, will be uh, explaining uh, their uh, learning environment, I think is situated in those localities also. So you will have many chances. And another aspect I think is uh, sports, in fact, because I know uh, royalists are you know, very good at sports uh, during their uh, school days, but also uh, beyond. And uh, for instance, rugby, you are very good at it. And uh, Japan was very happy to host the 2019 uh, Rugby World Cup. And uh, that was a great success. And I think rugby is booming. Right now, the captain of the New Zealand All Blacks, uh, after the uh, World Cup, uh, he decided to come to Japan and play for a Japanese club. So uh, rugby is booming. So if you have a chance to go to Japan, and those who like rugby, maybe you can be part of that in Japan. Another thing is cricket. Uh, in fact, I uh, went to prep school in London when I was younger, uh, and I played cricket and rugby and football there. Uh, but uh, concerning cricket, I've never had a chance to play that uh, back in Japan. But recently, cricket is also starting to boom uh, you know, uh, quietly. It's not you know, uh, going major yet, uh, but it's starting. So any of you who are very good at cricket, you can you know, help the Japanese become better in cricket. So maybe that's you know, an area you can assist the Japanese people uh, and you know, help them uh, get better. Uh, so I think Japan in many ways uh, could be a great destination uh, for a royalist uh, uh, you know, who are seeking to go global. And, I, uh, you know, and we hope many of you do. And we have ways to assist that. And uh, that's the next scholarship, uh, which uh, Professor Monte Cassini was part of it and also uh, 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 Doctor, uh, uh, Professor, Senior Professor Kanarate was also part of that. So uh, basically, uh, they fund you to you know, uh, do your uh, advanced studies in English in whatever area that uh, you think uh, is necessary. Uh, so you know, this also gives, I think, a push to you uh, to you know, uh, give it a, take a chance and give it a, you know, try uh, studying in Japan uh, because you, know, you don't have to be perfect in Japanese to be able to enroll in those courses. So. If you can have that in mind also, that would be most appreciated. So, and as uh, um, uh, uh, Professor Monte, uh, Monte Kassim also mentioned, um, Japan and Sri Lankan relationship is, uh, uh, is very, I think, uh, good and healthy. And next year, uh, we are approaching the 70th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between uh, uh, Japan and Sri Lanka. So we are aiming to make that a very good year, a special year with many exchanges uh, between uh, both countries. So through those exchanges, I hope, you know, uh, uh, many uh, royalists uh, can be part of that exchange. And hopefully among them, uh, uh, as uh, 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 Professor Monte Cassim or uh, like Ambassador Ekanasekara, you can be part, you know, and the actor uh, that will push forward uh, on the uh, bilateral relations. So with that, I thank all the organizers of this meeting and also especially uh, Brendra uh, of uh, Oraj to uh, allow me to participate uh, in this uh, gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we would like to move on to the presentations from uh, the four universities uh, who are with us today. And let's start off with Akita International University. 
uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor Monty Kasim again to introduce Akita International University. So, uh, um, my dear friends, uh, uh, Senior Professor Karuna Ratna, uh, Deputy Ambassador uh, Katsuki, uh, Birendra, and Royalists, old and young. Uh, let me just give you a brief introduction to one of the four universities participating today. Uh, I think the most interesting aspect of Japan is that it is becoming a destination where different cultures meet and coexist. Um, so let me go on to the next slide. Uh, well, I guess you know this, so I really shouldn't be plugging this. Uh, you can, everything depends on how you look at things, you know? Now, if you think of Japan as the Far East, which is the Western perspective, you'll see Japan at the right hand end of this map. But if you look at it as a place where East and West meet, it is right in the center of the world. So with Japan's new diplomatic initiative of a free and open Indo-Pacific, which is likely to be the new Silk Road of the 21st century, you'll find that Japan is at the crossroads of the East and the West. Um, um, now at a glance, Japan is comprised of four main islands, Hokkaido in the north, Honshu in the middle, Shikoku, that little orange colored island on the bottom, and Kyushu uh, on the left, um, where the red um, uh, island is. Now, there are many small islands too, but by and large, these four big islands dominate the geographic landscape of Japan. This university I'm going to talk about, Akita International University, is located in the northeast of Japan, right where the, it's marked up here. And out of a population of 120 million, Akita probably has a little over a million people. So it is a small, sparsely populated prefecture with a large land area. It is no country. Uh, uh, the GDP of Japan is shown here and per capita GDP. And Akita is one of the 47 prefectures of Japan, uh, a nation where Tokyo is the capital. Um, West Japan, Kansai and Kyushu uh, um, are the other areas of Japan which are popular study destinations, as are the three major metropolitan areas of Tokyo, Nagoya and Osaka, uh, among others. Now, in Japan, you'll find there are abundant fields to study. You can study almost anything you want by selecting the university you wish to go to. Japanese language, you can study business, enterprise, and innovation, you can study about different aspects of science and technology, you can look at history, politics, and economics, uh, you can look at more traditional heritage as well as pop culture, which includes animation, games, and the like, and a whole host of social sciences, natural sciences, and the humanities. You will also find that food culture is sophisticated, which uh, I know Sri Lankans are particularly fond of food. So as you live in Japan, you will gradually get acclimatized to a very different set of taste buds from what we in Sri Lanka are usually familiar with. Um, Japan is also a major destination for tourism. Um, COVID-19 has put a temporary stop to it. But I think that is only for the time being. But most importantly, unlike many countries, it has extremely good public security. Uh, safety and security are, in a sense, taken for granted in Japan. But it's when you go out of Japan that you realize that life everywhere else is not as rosy. But uh, these are aspects which make it easy for um, all kinds of young people to study, including young women who might 
feel threatened if the culture is not safe, uh, more so than uh, uh, even young men. But I think this aspect of public safety is something that is uh, a huge asset for Japan. Now, what about the university I'm talking about, Akita International University? I would say that it is a place where traditional and contemporary Japan coexist. The university was established in 2004. So it is small. It has about 850 students uh, with the graduate school. It's a small size public liberal arts college, public meaning that it is established by the prefecture of Akita, which is a kind of like a, what you might call a province in Sri Lanka. It has three majors, uh, global studies, which includes not only history, politics, diplomacy, and things like that, but also aspects of things like sustainability science, global business, which looks largely at very, very rigorous evidence-based analyses of business, uh, but also includes uh, considerations of new trends like ESG finances, uh, mobilizing finance for the digital transformation and things like that. And global connectivity is where man and machine meet. Uh, with this era of hyper-connectivity, it is the area where the sciences and the arts actually come together and where the AI IoT revolution is going to enable man to coexist with machine, uh, what is the best mix for this? Uh, what are the ethical foundations of this? And what are the technical aspects that we can leverage on? Of course, you don't need to know Japanese language before you come, you can learn it at campus, but all classes in Akita International University or AIU as you call it, are conducted in English, except of course for the Japanese language courses. One characteristic of this university is whatever students are asked to do is done by the whole university. All classes are conducted in English for every student and if they don't attain a certain level of proficiency, even if they're Japanese, they do not graduate. You will have no such problems, particularly coming from Royal College. However, we also have a mandatory one year study abroad with about 200 partner universities across the globe. A third of them are in Europe, a third of them are in the US, and about a third of them are in Asia. We are expanding this further to enhance our research and development partnerships with particularly universities in the emerging economies, and Sri Lankan universities will become a very, very strong candidate for this partnership, as will others like Vietnam or uh, some of the Central European countries as well as some of the Central Asian countries, largely directed at this new safe road of the sea and the new safe road on the land routes to Eurasia. Now, these are some slides of the campus environment. Where there's a lot of nature around and it's uh, really beautiful. You can see a high school student like yourself who is walking around as well. Uh, these are some of the cultural festivals. You can see that the mask tradition is very similar to Sri Lanka. It's the Namahage festival. And the rankings of the university at present uh, are interesting. Uh, we are the top global university, uh, one of 37 universities that Japan has designated for 10 years of uh, what you might call exceptional funding. Uh, we have received the S ranking, the highest ranking twice uh, out of two evaluations uh, so far. And we hope that we can keep this up uh, for the next evaluation, which is probably next year. Now, um, in the Times Higher Education Rankings, we are number one for university engagement, number one for the University for the Environment it has, Number 14 out of the 770 as the best university in Japan. We were number 10 in 2019 and 20, and we need to up our resource inputs to again regain that slot, and we are working towards it. Uh, we are the number one global university, according to uh, the university um, uh, 
China Daimyoku Tsushin, and number one among the small universities in Japan. Um, here is another photo of the campus environment. Uh, these are all for photos indicating what the campus looks like. Um, and I think the next stage of the university's uh, development pedagogically will be in what we call applied international liberal arts. Uh, liberal arts has conventionally been something that makes you reflect deeply uh, on who you are and where you would like to go towards as a human being. But we have used the word applied because we feel that the profoundness of thought must be matched with concreteness of action. So applied relates to integrating wisdom to face complex challenges while we nurture the altruistic spirit of caring for others. So application of knowledge to actual issues is a case in point. On the right, you can see the wind farms of Akita. Akita is a place where perhaps uh, sustainable energy is going to be... Uh, uh, can you uh, change the slide sites? Sorry? Will you be able to change the slides? For some I'm, reason, we only uh, see the, the second slide that you shared. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, let me come back to this again in a minute. Okay. If you'd like to get one of the other universities to present, I can sort this out and send it to you. It seems a waste okay, of time. Uh, then let's uh, move into uh, Ritzmekan uh, Asia Pacific University. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Miss Ai Yamamoto to introduce uh, uh, Ritzmekan Asia Pacific University to to all the royalists who are gathered here today. Okay, so I go. Hi, konnichiwa. Hi, Hi, so this wow. is um, with Meika in the Pacific University, I am Yamamoto from International Admissions. And then today we have Raul BJ Song. Oh yeah, he's Raul is here. It's uh, yes. right there. Raul, you can show up and introduce yourself. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Rahul De Silva, and I uh, graduated the Royal College in 2016. I did my levels in 2016, and uh, I graduated APU in September this year. So I'm just a fresh graduate from APU. All right. Hi. hi. We'll hear from him and um, later on. But firstly, please um. Let me introduce about our university shortly. So um, this is our campus, which make Asia Pacific University. We call it APU in short. This is the campus. It's on the top of the mountain, surrounded by lots of green and then blue sky, blue sea. I know, I think Kasemu Sensei also are familiar with this scenery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are located in Beppu, it's in Kyushu Island, south part of Japan. I think many of you know Tokyo. So it's around 1.5 hour flight from Tokyo. And uh, I think you'll hear a lot of information about many universities from now on. So try to, I try to uh, mention what stands out about APU today. So why choose APU? Diversity, academic, financial consideration, and postgraduate opportunity. So for the diversity, I want to show a short movie uh, to, let, to let you know what the diversity we are talking about. Let me show. Rao-san,見れたら見れてますとか言ってくれたら助かります。Hey guys, this is 28th Spring Entrance Ceremony and I'm Saad. And I'm Ruth from APU Student Social Media. And today, we're on a mission. Saad, what's the mission? 
Our mission is to make friends from as many countries as we can. And this semester we have students from 38 different countries joining us here at APU. So let's wait no more and meet them. Let's go. That was the main reason I came here. So guys, uh, what's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Vivek Yogi and I'm from Nepal. My name is Prodot and I'm from Nepal as well. I'm from Rwanda, from Nigeria. From Sri Lanka. From Korea. I'm from Fiji. From Russia. From Canada. From Azerbaijan. From France. From Finland, but I study in Norway. The USA. Germany. From Uganda. From Mongolia. From India. From Thailand. From Indonesia. <laughs> Diversity. Okay, so the movie goes on, but um, because we have short time, I stop here for today. So that was the diversity we are talking about for APU. And then going back to the slide. Okay. We have around 5,700 students in total, and then almost 50% are international students, and then other 50% are the Japanese students. So international students, uh, there is, as you saw in the movie, uh, Rwanda, from Sri Lanka, Canada, Russia, France, USA, many more. And not only students, but also faculty members are international, uh, almost 50% of all. So there are um, faculty members from Japan, of course, Iran, Iran, Australia, USA, Germany, etc. So you are coming to Japan if you come to APU, but this is a place where you can make networks for, um, to all over the world. So now I would like to ask Raul uh, some questions. So you chose to study in Japan, not like USA or Australia, where I know many Sri Lankan students tend to go. So what was the reason for you to choose Japan? So the reason I chose Japan is because the culture that I've experienced is very similar to Sri Lanka. So I felt very comfortable with that. It won't be a lot of a culture shock for me. And also before I came to APU, I actually got the chance to come to Japan to Ritsumeikan in Kyoto. And that's when I had my very first experience working uh, with an international community. And that seemed really, really interesting, just going through different people's ideologies, their points of views, going through the communication barrier as well. So that's something that really interested me. And that's when I kind of wanted to go out of Sri Lanka. And that's when I kind of wanted to see what Japan would be like uh, for my higher education. All right, all right. So there are many universities in Japan as well. Akita University, the universities in Tokyo, Osaka, yeah. yeah. So why did you choose APU? So personally, for me, there were a lot of reasons why I specifically chose APU. Uh, mainly, uh, some of them are for the diversity and uh, like you saw in the video for diversity and the multiculturalism that's that's there. I mean, uh, you have people from around the world. I mean, a lot of my friends aren't actually Sri Lankans. They're from many other different countries as well. And um, I think one thing that you'll get to experience is multicultural weeks which I think if you do get the chance to come to APU, you'll, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. And uh, the challenge that you get to learn a new language because your very first year, it will mainly be Japanese. And it might sound scary, but once you make a lot of friends, especially Japanese friends, it just becomes very, very interesting. And um, the, the majors that were offered for me, I, I in Royal College, I did uh, accounting, economics and management. But as soon as I came to APU, I switched to learning about environment, tourism, international relations. So that was also very, very interesting for me. So those were, oh, and also location, like it was mentioned, it's on top of a mountain. It's it's amazing. It's very beautiful, all four seasons. And it's a really, really interesting university. Hi, arigato gozaimasu. Okay. So like, uh, I'll go to academic now. Uh, like Raul san said, Almost all the classes are offered in both English and Japanese. So you can take regular lectures in English. You don't need to know any Japanese language when you apply, but after your enrollment, you have chance or actually required to take Japanese language in the first year, especially. But once you get to learn Japanese language, you'll be able to make friends, uh, Japanese friends, and also you'll be able to work as part-timer in local Japanese community. Actually, many students do so. So what you can study at APU, we have two colleges, College for International Management and College of Asia-Pacific Studies. 
For College of International Management, we call it APM in short, you can receive the Bachelor of Administration, Business Administration. And then there are specializations shown here. So for APM, we have the accreditation called AACSB, which is globally recognized. Only top 5% out of all the business school have this accreditation. And then there's Harvard, Stanford, Hong Kong universities, uh, which has the same accreditation. So you can say we are one of the top business schools in the world. The other college is, uh, I think Rao san also mentioned here, College of in, uh, Asia Pacific Studies. You can study these four specializations, environment development, culture, society, media, hospitality and tourism, international relations and peace studies. So this is where for you to learn, to recognize and think about various issues facing the Asia Pacific so that you may someday help um, solve set issues. So just an example, there are um, alumni from this college and then um, they work in international organizations as well as private companies. So um, some example, an alumni work in as an UN Secretariat, Human Rights Officer at United Nations. So of course they went to graduate school after APU, but um, you, we have so that alumni who work for the United Nations or the World Bank Group, etc. So why choose APU financial considerations? As uh, Mr. Sanjeev said, uh, Japanese university have its own uh, tuition or um, the scholarship system. So APU, we have the APU tuition reduction scholarship for international students up to 100%. This is the chart for the tuition and then other um, expenses. So on the top line, uh, this is tuition. So if you take a look at the right top, um, if there's zero tuition reduction scholarship, the tuition itself is around 12 thousand US dollars. And then at this point, if you compare to the, the tuition with United States, for example, the um, universities in the United States, if it's state university, annually uh, in the average, it's around 26,300 US dollars. So even if uh, there's zero tuition reduction scholarship, it's quite reasonable. And then let's say if you receive 65% tuition reduction scholarship, it's around 4,000 US dollars, including other cost of living, that um, total cost for first year will be around 17,000 US dollars. So Raul san if I may ask, how much tuition reduction scholarship you received? So I was on a 65 Okay, 65, yeah. yeah. And then it actually lasts for four years for your study at APU. Yeah. And then what matters for uh, to receive higher, high uh, amount of tuition reduction, it's underlined here. So these are the applicate that what do you need to apply. Academic translates, language proficiency test score, and extracurricular activities, such as uh, cricket, uh, rugby, which I mentioned before. So I believe many of you um, may um, have done the sports competition that counts extracurricular activities or any volunteer uh, experiences as well. So academic transcripts, language proficiency test score, and extracurricular activities. Also during the screening, you will have the interview with APU faculty members and APU staff. So what you talk in the interview are also uh, evaluated highly for the tuition reduction scholarship. Yes. So I want to mention postgraduate opportunity as well, but because we don't, uh, we have only ten minutes or so for today, uh, we can't go into um, um, deeply. But like Virendra San, uh, who is also alumni from APU, he worked in the one of the biggest famous um, entertainment company in Japan. Or uh, Raul San is working as English teacher for a public school in Japan. So excellent Sri Lankan alumni. Um, work in, the, in, in Japan as well as Sri Lanka or uh, the third countries. So today, because we don't have much time, I will leave the information 
for you to reach or for us to reach you here. Oh. So in the chat box, uh, number one, there's sign up link where you can sign up so that we can send you the update information from APU. So please do sign up here. And then today's PowerPoint slides, download link and password, and then contact to me or Dr. Harin, who is an advisor for uh, Sri Lankan high school students. And then there's one movie from Ashain, who is also alumni from Sri Lanka. Uh, you can hear his story as well. And the loud sound, if you don't mind, please um, put your chat, um, uh, contact in the chat box so that students can maybe reach you if they want to hear from you more. Hi. Thank you very much, Aisan and uh, Rahul, for joining us today. And uh, so let's get back to Professor uh, Kasim. Uh, sir, are you are you there? This so. Yes, I'm back. Yeah. Let me you. let me share the uh, slides from this end. Okay, sir. Okay, um, so I think uh, um, if you go back to the first slide, I can get my thoughts flowing. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So as I said, uh, the location of Japan depends on your perspective. We see it as the, as the place where the East and the West meet. Uh, and uh, as you saw with the APU presentation, uh, you have a dynamic range of uh, uh, countries that are that are participating on camp in campus life at APU. And we have a similar um, kind of environment, but with a slightly different focus. Next slide, please. The next, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we can go past the uh, Japanese slides and what I'll do is I'll get Mirenda to share these slides with you so that you can look at it at leisure. Uh, but um, Japan as a whole has a huge range of uh, subjects that you can study in. And it also has an extremely, uh, what you might call a vibrant uh, social life as well as uh, food culture, tourist attractions and very, very safe uh, to walk around and live in. Next slide, please. Now, what about Akita International University? We are a small sized uh, public liberal arts college uh, located in the Northeast of Japan, uh, in a prefecture with a small population, but large amount of land, uh, very abundant in nature. Uh, there are three major concent there are three major concentrations, and you can probably graduate in about nine specific areas of study. Uh, and those nine specific areas of study, I will share with you uh, if you come uh, for further information later on. The Global Studies uh, program is a, a combination of both uh, the kind of uh, problem solving you heard of in Asia Pacific Studies at APU. Uh, you will have uh, diplomacy, history, uh, international relations, as well as this new emerging era uh, of living with the environment, which is covered in what we call sustainability science studies. Uh, global connectivity, the one right at the bottom, uh, is to deal with the digital and technological transformation. It is a program that starts this year uh, and will include how human beings have to uh, preserve their humanity while coexisting with this increasingly uh, technological culture of machines uh, through AI, IoT, and other such transformations that are shaping industry in the future. The global business stream, which is in the middle, um, relates to business, how business should be in the future, but it is founded on a very strong evidence base with quantitative analyses uh, being quite strong. Um, we have a, a database company that is offering us uh, an endowed program, uh, which will be the basis for all these three courses. And there are many endowed programs in industry 
uh, such as those relating to renewable energies. Uh, Arctica is one of the major locations for Japanese uh, in, and foreign investment. Um, and as well as uh, to see how we can connect the local region of Akita with uh, the rest of the world. Now, uh, you can study Japanese language and Japanese studies courses as a plus, but all classes are conducted in English, except of course in Japanese language courses. Um, the whole university uh, uh, kind of ethos is fairly uh, strong with both the uh, learning only in English, uh, but it is also uh, uh, very strong in making sure that you have an experience abroad and there's a mandatory one year study abroad program, slightly set back because of COVID having to go hybrid, but we'll be back on track from the beginning of next year uh, with these partner universities. Uh, we hope that uh, COVID will abate and we can then resume life uh, once again. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what are the rankings and recognitions? Uh, there are 37 Japanese universities that have got the top global university award, including the universities presenting today. Um, um, it is number 14 in the Japanese rankings uh, under the Times Higher Education Ranking in 2021, was number 10 in 2019 and 2020. Uh, it is number one for university engagement uh, this year number one for the university with the most attractive environment, number one as a global university and uh, as a small university with another assessor, Daiga Kutsushin, which is a university-centered uh, journal. And now you see uh, some of the uh, images down here, but one of the star-studded features of the campus is actually the university's library. And if you go to the university's homepage at aiu.ac.jp, www.aiu.ac.jp, you'll see the spectacular library made out of the uh, Akita uh, cedar, which is uh, very, very renowned for the quality of the material. Uh, and uh, the library is open 24 hours a day. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, this is some of the external environment of the campus, some slides showing you the abundant nature and the next slide, please. A few more campus slides. Next one, please. So what is the key to the International Liberal Arts Program that we have? Uh, you study both the sciences and the humanities and uh, social sciences. But we want to now reform, we have started reforming the curriculum and from this year, this applied international liberal arts becomes our focus. Applied refers to joining the uh, thought processes that are profound in the liberal arts education, matching it with the internationalization of sending our students abroad and receiving students from abroad. And thirdly, linking the whole process with what we call application of the knowledge you have learned to solving actual issues. And this is the reason why we have those endowed programs in partnership with industry. Uh, Akita is going to be one of the homes for environment for sustainable government governance investments uh, over the next uh, several years. And uh, one of the um, big uh, international investors in uh, renewable Energies has endowed a program on sustainable en energy uh, at AIU. Um, we have a, a database company that is uh, uh, developing a community of developers with us uh, with these new programming languages that will be part of the global continuity and global business studies uh, aspects as well. Uh, the application of the knowledge gained in any particular discipline uh, towards which you tend to gravitate. Uh, and how it relates to other disciplines, this integration of knowledge is very much part of the way the curriculum is structured. And that is why when you graduate, you can have specialization in about one of, one of nine areas where you can 
choose to have a major and a minor one as well. Now the application or the adaptation of your uh, own ability, uh, which comes to the liberal arts education, to overcome difficulties that you face, but also being able to empathize with others and adjust to other cultures is what we hope our learning environment fosters. Next slide, please. So there is a rich and abundant cultural heritage. The Northeast of Japan has some of Japan's oldest uh, cultural artifacts, including the performing arts. Uh, Akita International University has an archive of these performing arts uh, heritage. And we are planning to digitize this and analyze it with a greater depth uh, over the coming years. And I think I will be working quite closely with Birendra on this as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, Akita is also famous for this uh, mascot in the middle, which is the Akita breed of dogs, a very, very uh, famous breed in Japan. On the left, you can see the richness of Mount Chokai, which is on the southern side of the prefecture. And on the right, you see the Kanto Festival. It's one of the three great festivals in Japan, where, including our student uh, circle, uh, they balance these huge floats on their fingertips, on their shoulders, on their backs, and they move it around each other. And it's a fantastic sight to see as the summer ends and the cold autumn begins to uh, strike the project. The next slide, please. So please come to Akita. You can experience, like at APU, the real Japan, which is outside the metropolitan centers. I hope uh, that if you need any further information, uh, you can contact me directly at M-C-A-S-S-I-M. -S -S I'll put it on the chat box. Uh, M-C-A-S-S-I-M -S -S at aiu.ac.jp. My admissions office and uh, colleagues extend their apologies to you because they, they would have been presenting this. But today is our admissions entrance exam, uh, today and tomorrow. So everyone is tied up with that, either invigilating or being part of the uh, assessors. So they cannot uh, take time off. And that is the reason why I'm here by proxy. But that having been said, Please feel free to stay in touch. Uh, Birendra knows how to get hold of me at any time. And we will be happy if you come to Japan for a start and also consider Akita as one of your destinations. We do not have uh, many Sri Lankan students right now, but we hope that we change with this interaction with you today. So thank you ever so much for everything and hope to see some of you here soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Looking forward to visit Akita in the near future. So moving on with the proceedings, I would, uh, next we have uh, a video presentation uh, by Mr. Darren Spiggs uh, from the E-Track Admissions Center of Tokyo International University. Hello, my name is Darren Biggs, representing the E-Track Admissions Center at Tokyo International University. Tokyo International University, or TIU, was founded in 1965 to nurture truly international-minded leaders who will contribute to global society through vision, courage, and intelligence. We created the E-Track program just over six years ago in the spirit of this mission. When we started, we had just under 50 students, but since then we have grown in size and scope, and now we have well over 1,000 students in our program. We are very proud of our international environment. In total, we have over 6,500 students at TIU. About 20% or 1,300 students are from 68 different countries. Our campus is located just outside central Tokyo. Now Tokyo is an ideal city for international students. As the capital of the third largest economy in the world, it is where all the action is. So if you are studying something like business or international relations, it's in your best interest to be close to where the action is because there are many internship and job opportunities in Tokyo. And it is for this reason and for other reasons why it is rated one of the top cities for international students in the world. 
From fall 2023, we will open a new campus in Ikebukuro, which is one of the major commercial hubs of central Tokyo. So if you enroll by spring 2023, you will have the unique opportunity to take classes both at our current campus and our new campus when it opens. The e track program offers three majors taught entirely in English. We take an active learning approach, which means instead of just sitting passively and listening to professors talk all day, you will actively participate in your own education through discussions and projects. We also do not require any Japanese language to apply. You can come as a complete beginner and take TIU Japanese courses from beginner all the way to advance. The first major I'd like to introduce is our Bachelor of Arts in Business Economics. And in this major, you will gain the skills and knowledge you need to succeed in the international business world, taking courses that cover management, marketing, economics, finance, entrepreneurship, and other topics in business. Our newest major is the Bachelor of Science in Digital Business and Innovation. This major is like a hybrid between an IT degree and a business degree. Students will learn how to apply IT and digital technology to the business world and how to innovate new products and services in the digital world. And by the way, uh, pictured here is our own Professor Jay Rajasekara, who is also from Sri Lanka. So please do talk to him if you enroll at TIU. And our third major I'd like to introduce is our Bachelor of Arts in International Relations. This major looks at the relationships between countries and the roles of organizations like the United Nations. It is a very flexible major and students who major in international relations go on to work in a variety of fields, including consulting, government work, NPOs and NGOs, and private companies. Student life and support is very important at TIU. We have an international exchange office and a network of students helping students so that new international students can adapt to life in Japan and TIU comfortably. We want to make sure that you feel safe and welcome at TIU. And so we offer a variety of services to help you in your daily life. We also have a number of clubs and activity circles, which is a great way to make new friends and pursue your hobbies. We have over 60 clubs and circles focusing on a wide range of activities. For sports, we have clubs and circles for rugby, badminton, football or soccer, basketball, karate, judo, swimming, weightlifting, and more. For the arts, culture, and other types of interests, we have photography, art, jazz, orchestra, computer studies, and much more. We also have a varsity level Model United Nations Club. If you are interested in learning how the United Nations works and also developing your communication and debating skills, and if you are part of the MUN club at your school and would like to continue, there is a place for you here at TIU in the MUN club. We also have dormitories for international students, and there are also off-campus living options. Our international exchange office can help you with your housing choices and again, help you adjust to life in Japan. At the Career Services Center, you can apply for internships, get one-on-one -on -one career counseling, and attend job hunting seminars and campus career fairs. In 2020, we achieved a 94.5% job placement rate for international students. We also have different ways to develop your practical skills, such as career experience practicums. So in addition to internships, you can take a practicum, which is like a class in which you create a project with your peers and are mentored by industry professionals. We have partnered with uh, companies such as one of the largest IT companies in India and also very well-known automobile makers and logistics companies and advertising companies here in Japan. And so this is a great way for students to gain experience while interacting directly with real world working professionals. We offer a tuition reduction scholarship here at TIU. It is merit-based. And if you get this scholarship, you can see your tuition reduced by 30, 50, 80, or even 100%. If you have previous experience in Model United Nations, 
and you would like to major in international relations, and you would like to join our TIU MUN team, then you may apply to the MUN scholarship. And if you get this scholarship, your enrollment fee will be waived. Here are the dates for September intake. You can see that we just finished one of our application periods, but there are three more opportunities to apply for September intake. They are in January from mid-February through early March and in April. For more details about requirements and dates, please see our website and our application guidelines. If you'd like to learn more about what a class at TIU is like, we offer free online mock classes. We have one in December, one in January, and another one in February. The next one coming up is on Saturday, December 11th at 11.30 a.m. Sri Lanka time. And our own Professor Nora Sharkasi of the Digital Business and Innovation major will teach about artificial intelligence and digital marketing. If you're interested in attending, you can register through our website or through our Facebook page. We hope to see you at the mock class and we hope to see you on campus very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Darren, for that uh, video presentation. And uh, next, uh, before we continue, uh, move on to the presentation from the University of Tokyo Sri Lanka office, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Abe Amaradasa, the chairman of the Loyalty Pledge Management Committee of the Royal College Union, to speak a few words. And uh, let me briefly introduce Loyalty Pledge, uh, which is a program within the Royal College Union uh, committed to support fellow royalists who are aspiring to achieve their dreams. And uh, Loyalty Pledge is sustained by its own income sourcing programs and donations of past royalists and non-royalists uh, living around the world. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Birendra. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in Japan and in Sri Lanka, I'm delighted and have the pleasure of representing Royal College Union uh, uh, on this task. Uh, uh, deputy Head of Mission in, uh, of uh, Japanese Embassy in Sri Lanka, then the dignitaries of uh, uh, our embassy in Tokyo, also Professor Monte Kasim and other advisors who would uh, be in partnership in promoting uh, World Royalist Association of Japan and uh, fellow uh, students of Royal College and the old boys who are supporting in this regard. Hi, everyone. Uh, when Brendra uh, brought this topic up, we were delighted because the Loyalty Pledge uh, Committee of Royal College Union is undertaking uh, counseling, uh, also career guidance uh, affairs uh, pertaining to uh, upper uh, school plus the secondary and upper uh, university education in Sri Lanka as well as abroad. Royal College Union always sees that uh, global competitiveness is the key uh, now onwards, and especially aiming 2025, 2030 onwards. One has to be globally competitive, especially in the world of a network world of getting things done, uh, 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 having your markets around the globe, having your academic research covering all aspects, all geographies of the, uh, the world, and, and not only in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan graduates should be able to work anywhere in the world, either physically or by uh, themselves networking. In that pursuit, we started uh, these uh, counseling services a few years back, and uh, it's uh, opportune uh, uh, to find uh, a able partner in Japan, Oraj, coming forward to give exposure and the space available in Japanese universities. We are very glad about it, and uh, uh, now that the, the space is open. In fact, I listened to a few presentations and it was uh, really good to see how uh, these unseen uh, spaces and the opportunities are open to a fellow royalists uh, and also uh, the old boys who have uh, done their 
undergraduate studies and who are pursuing with the uh, with the postgraduate work. So I'm thankful to Raj, especially Birendra, for uh, getting us involved in it. I would uh, suggest we would follow it up with uh, specific opportunities available, and we will make sure uh, uh, the the boys who are coming uh, up after the A levels would soon be able to uh, travel to Japan. Thank you so much once again, and we would definitely be there to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. So next, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor H.D. Karuna Ratna, the Senior Professor of the University of Tokyo, uh, Sri Lanka office, uh, to introduce uh, the University of Tokyo. Uh, sorry, Professor, uh, and uh, so thank you very much for your patience. Uh, very good uh, morning, very good afternoon for the people joining from Tokyo. Uh, Deputy uh, Ambassador of the Mission and uh, our distinguished uh, uh, Sri Lankan uh, Academia, uh, particularly uh, Mon Professor Monty Kasim. Uh, let me to share the uh, thoughts from the University of Tokyo Sri Lanka office. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, as you see here, I hope you can see my PowerPoints very well. So uh, uh, let me to uh, share. Uh, can you see my PowerPoints? Yes, sir. Right. So that uh, I will go uh, quickly. Uh, actually, the University of Tokyo Sri Lanka office was established in uh, 2019 to uh, supply the information for uh, Sri Lankan students who are wishing, willing to migrate to Japan. And this is under the study uh, in Japan Global Network Project of the uh, mixed uh, Japan, which is the Ministry of Education uh, in Japan. Uh, Mr. Mori Kasuhiro from the University of Tokyo and myself from the University of uh, uh, Colombo in Sri Lanka join and currently I'm functioning as the president of Japanese Graduate Alumni Association as well. Then of course, uh, uh, today's world is, you know, di digitalized world. And our office, of course, uh, working virtually more and more. You can see the links we have given. This is the, the homepage in the University of Tokyo, Sri Lanka office homepage. And our Facebook page, uh, details are given here. Uh, you can, I, I have shared this PowerPoint slide with you. So you can join with us uh, to get all uh, information regarding the Japan. And uh, as uh, we know, uh, in the University of Tokyo has uh, uh, offices for 42 countries in the world. So the Sri Lanka also one of that now. Uh, the, the University of Tokyo Sri Lanka office is located in Bambalapitiya, Joseph Lane, and uh, one uh, senior lecturer from Sabaragamo University, specialist on Japanese language, uh, Shirani Kolabage, and one IT consultant, uh, 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 Sachit Pereira, is working with me. And we have visited the Sri Lankan schools and educated the, about the Japanese universities. For example, you can see we visited the Royal College uh, on uh, uh, 2020, uh, 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 2020, February uh, 28. We conducted awareness session for Royal College students. Uh, now, up to now, uh, we have conducted 14 sessions in schools in Sri Lanka. Totally, uh, 10,025 students participated up to now uh, for our awareness sessions on Japanese universities and information on the, uh, the how to enter Japanese universities. I always uh, invite the Japanese universities to join with us to uh, provide their information to Sri Lankan uh, school students. Uh, why Japan? I think uh, many universities are explaining uh, high educational standards, uh, generous uh, scholarships, uh, relatively low cost of tuition fees, cultural factors, peace, safety, and security, well articulated by our uh, excellent scholar, Monte Kasim, and uh, health facilities, uh, job opportunities. So there are, it's a package actually, if you uh, can see the Japanese universities. Uh, one important aspect uh, in the Japanese education system, just I wanted to tell you, uh, there are 786 universities in Japan. 
uh, in sri lanka we have only 17 universities so there are, there is a range of uh, universities for your uh, very tiny specialization any specialization you can do in japanese uh, universities that's the most important thing and modern technology you can learn from the uh, japanese universities so there is a source for these universities i am uh, displaying here you can go to this source this is of course just so published every year uh, uh, the information on all japanese universities uh, book in english medium what are the programs going on so you can go to this site and see all the information by uh, uh, yourself uh, by watching this and then there are various scholarships i am not going to uh, elaborate all the scholarships here uh, scholarship, uh, there is a book called uh, scholarship for international students in japan so this book 2021 2022 book can be downloaded from the down you can see the uh, web link i have given so that this is the latest version of the just so book all the information you can uh, uh, get from there that regarding the japanese government next scholarship uh, japan student service association just so local government and local international association scholarship and provide uh, foundation for scholarship private foundations and of course uh, 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 scholarships available for other places uh, uh, also there then moving into uh, the uh, uh, japanese language education in sri lanka some are worried about uh, whether we can learn japanese uh, in sri lanka of course there are various institutions uh, doing uh, japanese language education in sri lanka if you are seeking to get uh, a basic language there are uh, in, uh, the uh, the five steps in japanese language of course sasakawa has been the uh, prominent place but in recent past because of the severe shortage in uh, japanese language education we as a japanese graduate uh, uh, we are uh, i am the president and our tokyo university collaborated with the university of tokyo to start the japanese language courses so now the university of tokyo uh, university of colombo university of colombo provide the japanese language courses in zoom base you can get uh, these uh, things in the internet Uh, so you can learn uh, uh, in sri lanka japanese language for a very reasonable low price uh, we, it is not a uh, our main uh, purpose is to provide basic japanese to go to uh, japan mm -hmm. and apart from that uh, our uh, references given here just so website and the uh, study uh, in japan website and all other uh, websites given here uh, please remember that the university of tokyo sri lanka office is not a agency institute we are not a agency we provide public information by going into uh, universities and schools uh, in uh, sri lanka as i mentioned that up to now we have conducted 114 sessions which covered 10000 over 10000 students so we provide these information there are more information of course mr Uh, sachit uh, perera and uh, shirani kolabage uh, conduct about one and a half hour uh, one and a half hour program for each school and uh, as i shown you even for the uh, royal college we have conducted uh, that program and this this uh, collaboration was developed when i was uh, serving as a invited professor in the university of tokyo under the japan foundation fellowship I have been uh, affiliated to eight universities in Japan uh, as a, a scholar. I did my PhD uh, in Japan and my master's also. So, but my uh, permanent working place is the University of Colombo. This is my thirty-second year in University of Colombo. While serving in University of Colombo, I am supporting uh, the Japanese Graduate Alumni Association as well as the uh, the relations between Japan and Sri Lankan education programs. so uh, these are the message i just want to tell you if you want any uh, thing you can contact us by using the link uh, what we have given to you thank you very much for giving this opportunity thank you very much sir uh, for sharing all that information and uh, that uh, that's the end of all the uh, presentations about the universities that we uh, have for you today and uh, 
before we wind up, uh, I would like to invite Professor Yuichi Kondo, uh, Professor and former uh, Dean of Admissions of Ritimek in Asia Pacific University, to speak to you uh, about the topic career development through uh, study abroad. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Very good morning, uh, not morning, evening or afternoon. Let me give you uh, the slide first. Okay, I know you royalists are the elite in Sri Lanka. That means you have to work for the world. That's, that's your destiny. So how? It's time of VUCA. I mean, some of you may know this word already. This kind of symbolizes or summarizes the future. Uh, 21st century, things are going to be very messy. So how are you going to work for it and then work on it? That's something you have to think as a royalist, the elite. So one thing you should know is that you simply cannot afford to stay in Sri Lanka. You only know uh, about Sri Lanka, but you don't know anything else as outside of Sri Lanka, then how can you work for the world? So you really have to think what kind of world you are going to live in, what kind of world you want to create by studying outside of your comfort zone. Then Japan, many of the like, uh, representatives uh, discuss why Japan. Uh, you can go to UK, you can go to Australia, but it's going to be your familiar landscape you know the language, nothing would challenge you more than you stay in Japan where everything is very, very different. And then you, come to, you can become the person you really can change the world in future. So think Japan as a study des as a abroad destination, then you can make your study abroad as a value added one, not just a simple, okay, I've done this. You really have to think how you can create the value in yourself so that you can work for the world. I know the motto of Royal College, learn or leave. I just changed that around. Royalists, it's time for you to depart to learn. Depart Sri Lanka and then learn in Japan and then about the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for choosing royal colors uh, on your presentation. So uh, that uh, brings us to the end of, uh, uh, of our event, your pathway to Japan. And um, as I mentioned to you before, uh, Uraj is committed to promote and strengthen the cultural, educational, scientific, sports and entertainment relationships between Japan and Sri Lanka. And uh, therefore, we are happy to provide any help in a maximum capacity to achieve your dreams. Please feel, feel free to send your questions, comments and concerns through the form which you will find by, uh, uh, by scanning this QR code. Let me quickly share it with you. Well, this is the QR code, uh, scan this and you'll be able to send your questions, concerns and uh, comments so that one of us could uh, get in touch with you and uh, uh, guide you in the correct path. And uh, with that, we will conclude your pathway to Japan. And thank you very much for all the distinguished guests who joined us today. And thank you very much for each and every one of you for watching and have yourself a great evening. Aibo one.